We'd like to say thank you to our sponsors, Watchman Cigars, Red Hill Brewing, Crave Bath and Body, and the Level Up logo. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast, where you're invited to come up on the front porch, have a seat, and sit a spell. Uh, we have a great show lined up for you. We are continuing our series on things we love, and this is going to be one of my favorites, I think. Um, Biggin is not with us. He is currently... Uh, recovering from his uh, food coma sustained overseas. Uh, we'll have him back next week. So uh, bear with us this week as we try to drive the boat without him. Um, but helping me with that tonight, we've got um, a regular crew plus an extra. So we'll start off with Magic Man. How you be, Darren? Hey, everybody. How's it going? Good. And we have Aaron. Hello. And very special guest host, Mr. <laughs> Jim Purvis. Hey, y'all. Good to see you. Awesome. So this week, um, like I said, we're, we're going to be talking about things we love. And personally, me and Biggin both love food. I think uh, Aaron might join us in that a little bit. Magic Man's credentials are <laughs> yes. still questionable. Um, so we brought in the Bearded Home Cook to help us out with that. Aaron, can you tell people where they can find us on the webs? Absolutely. Um, so we got a new and improved website up for you guys at sfpradio.com. Check us out there. Um, you can find all of our social media links on there um, to our Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, all the things. Um, you can contact us. Leave us a five-star review. Mm. Say something nice. Um, you can donate to the show. Um, and you can leave us a voicemail. Yes. Do we have any more voicemails for you? Uh, we don't have you tonight, um, but we, if you leave those there, we, if it's, you know, if it meets the proper credentials, we will play it. If it's funny enough, or if we get bored yes. enough, we'll just run through a bunch of them. We run out of things to talk about. We'll listen to you guys, <laughs> leave us messages or something, right? <clears throat> uh, yeah, so next leave us week, a voicemail. <laughs> yeah, voicemail, please. You know, it's fun. Tell us what you think about us. <laughs> Tell us what you really think about us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you want to know? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so if you, uh, yeah, please check out our YouTube channel, Southern Fried Philosophy. We have a video up uh, with Jim. We, we made some biscuits and gravy. And I have to say they were probably the best biscuits I've ever made, personally. I'm not sure if I told you that. Pretty spectacular. Uh, it was a great, it was fun, a lot of fun to do. So please go check that. You know, hit the likes and the bells and whatever else you're supposed to do on YouTube. If you're interested in sponsoring the show, um, please send us an email at sfpradio at gmail.com. Uh, we want to shout out to uh, new listeners from the state of Oklahoma tonight. Um, I think Magic Man has some fun facts about Oklahoma for us. All right. So first thing, in Bristow, Oklahoma, it is against the law to serve water to a customer in a restaurant unless one peanut in a shell is also served. <laughs> the consequences for this serious offense can result into a fine of a big whopping five dollars that oh. kind of tells you how long how old that one's been on the books <laughs> um okay well back up yeah. you can't serve water to a customer unless there's a, pe a unshelled peanut Is that what it says no a peanut in a shell mm -hmm. a peanut in a shell okay 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 in the glass oh in the glass that's insane. Okay. All right. I, I, I could just stop and talk about that out. forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, it doesn't get specifics, but I just, I love the, the fine of up to $5. $5. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's crazy. All right. Okay. All right. Next one. Um, Sylvan N. Goldman of Humpty Dumpty stores and standard food markets invented the first shopping cart so that people could buy more in a single visit to the grocery store. So pretty much a staple of any uh, shopping right. experience uh, as sure. far as uh, getting you know food or whatever. Uh, it was invented in 1937 on June the 4th, and uh, he unveiled his creation in Oklahoma City. So there you go with that. Hmm. All right, and for those of you who are New York Jets fans, you better not be caught with wearing any paraphernalia of your favorite team in Ada, Oklahoma, because you will be jailed, or it could be jailed. Jet specifically. So they don't Jets specifically, the New York Jets. So I guess they are not Jets fans. Maybe, I don't know, Cowboys or who knows? Who well, knows? There's not even a professional team in Oklahoma, right. right? 
No, yeah. the closest <laughs> ones are what Texas and uh, Colorado. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's kind of cool. All right. Not gonna uh, yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Getting any, any more? So, um, he, yeah. Well, I've got a couple, okay, uh, three please more. Keep bring, um, bring it on. So this is I, bring it on. So this is I'm I'm kind of wondering where this one came about because um, you know, Oklahoma is a landlocked state, but whaling is illegal in the state of Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. Where did that come from? Uh, I don't know. It's. Yeah. Uh, yeah, how do, how does that even? No, wait a minute. Exactly. You know, wailing. You, you could be wailing on the side of the road, like crying mm. and wailing and throwing dust and doing. I mean, Spell, spelling spelling correctly. Well, that's that's yeah. This this spelling is so. What you're talking about is W A I L I N G. This is W H A L I N G. Oh my gosh! I think about the the, the giant the largest mammal. mammals on Earth. That's incredible. that's right. That's right. So I guess. I guess if uh, a, a whale somehow swims its way to Oklahoma, you, you can't hunt it down. So um, the next thing is in in Ponca City, a tornado once picked up a house with a man and his wife still in it. Though the walls and the roof were blown away, the floor remained intact and eventually glided downward, setting the couple safely back on the ground. Oh, Interesting. Wow. And you know what's funny is... It, that part where it says uh, "blown away," that kind of made me think of that. Uh, was that Carrie Underwood song, <laughs> "Blown Away"? And she talks about Oklahoma. Yeah, so I guess there's some truth going on over there. I think it's safe and to say there, finally, was, there was no uh, uh, clean oh. underpants among them in that situation. <laughs> no, I, I I doubt it. I, I bet you, yeah, both, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then finally, in Tulsa, uh, you may not open up a soda bottle without the supervision. Of a licensed engineer. <laughs> so let that one sit for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, That's why they drink so much beer. Wow. That's okay. There those, you those go. Are good. Those are pretty good. Thank you. Oh, wow. All right. So, uh, wow. That's how, how do you follow that? Right. So, uh, speaking of, you know, Oklahoma, or traveling, I should say, Magic man, you've been doing a little bit of traveling. How, how you been doing right now? Where are you guys hanging out? We are currently in the bustling metropolis of Huntsville, Alabama. Um, we're actually in the southern part of the city on on the Miss on not Mississippi River on the Tennessee River. Wrong state. Um, <laughs> so, what's inter- what's been interesting this week is um, you know uh, Huntsville is is known for being uh, Rocket Central. Um, you know, it's where they uh, brought a lot of the German rocket scientists from uh, after World War II uh, to the Huntsville area where they worked on the U.S. space program and uh, kind of like where NASA got its start, et cetera. Um, there's a, an arsenal, like a quarter mile from here, I guess. And over the last three days, we've been hearing these loud boom, just, I mean, and multiple times, boom, boom. And at first it scared us to death because I was like, are we getting attacked by the Russians, you know, with everything that's going on? Mm-hmm. So who knows? I mean, they, I guess they're practicing. I, I, I don't know. Well, then yesterday um, I was I was on a conference call with work and all of a sudden the tornado sirens went off and it was a clear day. Nothing, no, not a cloud in the sky. The tornado sirens went off. I guess they were testing them. But that kind of mm. <laughs> scared us a little bit. I don't know if I'd but, hang um, out there too long. This weekend. You don't need to get out of there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, the tornado right. magnet. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This this weekend, uh, we're going to go visit the uh, the uh, uh, rocket. I forgot what it's called. The rocket museum. The you know where where they tell you about all the rockets and stuff. So, looking forward to that, and we'll probably go visit some other places. So, I'm pretty sure if uh, um, Biggin was here, he'd be he loving the weather here man right now. The the Trump, North Korea. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> so I've got a question for you guys. Did you ever yeah. watch that movie um, Space Camp? I sure I did. did. Uh, in fact, I was thinking that I was thinking about that when we were on our way here. Yeah. So how crazy it's is been it a long that time. grown been... people, like grown men like us, can go play at this NASA headquarters in Huntsville, Alabama, Space Camp? You pay like twelve hundred bucks, and you get to act like a preteen child, pretending to push all the buttons and send stuff into space. And I'm not gonna lie, I almost did it last summer. Just saying. Oh. That's wow. cool. Crazy. 
That's what That's you do great. with adult. Do it while you're there. Uh, Videotape it. Put it on next week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I need to start to. I've been bad about taking pictures and and stuff. Like la- the weekend before last, we went and uh, we were in the Fort Payne area, and uh, we were visited a bunch of falls and and very spectacular sites out there. It's, it's a gorgeous area. So I, I I need to do better about taking pictures and and uh, uh, and videos, etc. So yeah. Awesome. Super cool. Uh, so, Aaron, how you be Aaron? I'm good. Yeah, I'm really good. good. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I was like listening to Ryan. I was like, <laughs> um, <laughs> I like zoned out for a second. Uh, I'm good. Uh, this weather is amazing mm-hmm. here in North Carolina this week, so I very much enjoyed that. Um, yeah, just. You know, I feel like I'm coming alive. I feel like I'm coming out of the winter shell. You know, it's just like right. <laughs> the vibes are good. So, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> except my allergies are. Yeah, it's, know, uh, it's the yellow snow cool season effects, pretty so. soon here. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, horrible. So, yeah. not looking forward to that. But we'll yeah, here's coming. Better than snow. It's so nice. You really want to go outside really bad, but if you stay out there too long, you're just gonna come in like <laughs> your eyes you're like, like, swollen shut. <laughs> Every morning, just like uh. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, Jim, it's been uh, just over a year, I think, since you were on the show. So, what have you been up yeah. to here? Well, as you could tell by the color on my face, I was very close to the equator recently in Mexico. Oh. Oh. Um, so Ooh. let me just tell you, margaritas oh, wow. flow 24 7 down there, just <laughs> getting that out there. My favorite. Um, <laughs> but man, I, life's been super good, like super busy traveling, eating, cooking, doing all kinds of stuff, which by the way, Brian, I have to tell you mm. that that biscuits and gravy thing, man, like that, that surprised me how much fun that was. Mm-hmm. But also the next morning, what do you think I did? I got out the food processor and I made myself another batch of biscuits yeah. because that little trick, I'm telling you, that is money. That's- I could not believe how good these things were. So mm-hmm. yeah, super fun stuff. So uh, playing with the episodes, just trying to get some new content, just haven't spent a lot of time lately because Man, I'll be in Vegas next week. I'm going to be in Ohio two weeks later. Please, God, don't make me go to Ohio. I'm a Steelers fan. There's nothing mm-hmm. good in Ohio. Sorry, folks. Um, it's just where we are. But but at least yeah. the Bengals didn't just, win, so you don't have to be with those insufferable guys up there. Right? I was rooting against them so much, man. I mean, not just for Matthew Stafford, but like, there's just no way that you can let anybody else in the AFC North win because then right. they just, just shove it in your face and shove it in your face. But I'm a little concerned about one thing, Brian. Is it okay to just kind of tell you that right now? Is it Absolutely. okay? Absolutely. We're, 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 we're talking about book food. And, and I actually thought I was supposed to be the one string ukulele oh. uh, guest tonight. So we're not talking about music. And I'm a little uh, offended because they taught me how to play this. <laughs> oh, well, we, we can, we can feel free to play us a song right now. Oh, that's not, all I got right there. That was it. We'll I just stop. Did it. That was <laughs> we're flexible. <laughs> I can type it into these show notes and we'll, it'll be like, it was always there. <laughs> nah, it's all good. All good. But life's good guys. Awesome. Great. Uh, I forgot what I was going to actually talk about tonight. I've <laughs> been so tired. Like I'm not, I just stopped sleeping, I guess. The weather's great. Um, actually I was going to go, I know I was about to go get a, chicken from a new place tonight but the line like the entire like housing development next to there must have like known i was gonna go and beat me to it or something oh no but it's, it's called slim just called slim chicken or something i forget the name of the restaurant because i didn't get a bag or a receipt this is like chicken tenders but in this area it's over like your uh, highland creek if you're familiar with charlotte you know oh, yeah it's like chicken chicken sandwiches sauces they have a chicken wa- and waffles on the menu, so I was really kind of interested in that. But that's what I was going to kind of review that place. And now I ended up going to Bojangles, and, and I hate to say it wasn't as good as it should have been. But So why would you name a chicken place Slim? Because I think we all understand the phrase, don't trust a skinny cook. <laughs> right. So if you name it Slim, I probably don't trust it. Let me find the name. I might have it still pulled up here. Um, but yeah. They pay you to plug slim it, chickens. You get the name really wrong. It just looks like they look really good, like Southern inspired chicken tenders. Kind of like Zaxby's, I imagine. But mm. who knows? We'll never well, know. We're going to make some fried chicken sometime, right? With Biggin oh, when please. he gets back. Yes. We're totally doing some fried chicken and cast iron. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We may have to bring out some more biscuits. Yeah, yeah so. sure. You need to have, there's no excuse not to make biscuits. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm still impressed that he ate gnocchi. I never in a million years thought old country boy there would go out there and eat gnocchi. And he sent that picture. It. I was like, dang, I was impressed. Yeah. Oh, I don't think he knows how to spell it, but he, he did a good job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, gnocchi. Yeah. It's not spelling. <laughs> We're not going to, it's not spelling <laughs> podcast. We won't get into that too much. No, not tonight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so next week uh, we have Jeffrey Holesclaw, <laughs> who's uh, a, author and pastor and we're breaking into a new series about deconstructing church might be really interesting so that's that's coming up next week uh, i do not have a southern phrase of the week for you hmm. because i forgot it to, to even look so if you guys want to pull one up and explain it to us feel free um but what i want to get straight to Jeet is yet what g yet oh that's perfect g so okay Jeet yet I'm not sure that's Southern though, because that happens All right. in Pennsylvania. I right? totally was thinking it, and you said it. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> All I say, that is so cool. country is countrywide. Yeah, <laughs> that might be a show title right there. G yet? Oh, I even ask, how do you spell yeah. that though? That's the real question. But the response is no Jew. No, <laughs> that's really it. <laughs> We're not talking faith and religion here. It's just that's what it is. J U E. Next week. No yeah. Jew. Yeah. That's pretty cool that you guys actually know that. Oh, yeah. Well, my wife says that a lot, and she's from, she's a Yenzer, so. Oh, see? I knew I liked you. Well, at least I like her. I'm not sure yeah. about you yet. Yeah, she's, she's all right. <laughs> so uh, we're going to jump straight into the, the food content here because, I mean, that's what we're all here for, right? The good stuff. Uh, I saw on uh, Magic Man's Instagram channel, I think yesterday or two days ago, you were given the old Whataburger in the South South Americans down there, a try not not the classic North Carolina Whataburger that I know and love, no. but this other <clears throat> yellow logo thing, right? Or orange and white logo, yeah, orange yeah. and white, a little, okay. little, little South America, like Brazil, yeah. South of South America is like not the South <laughs> of America, South yeah. this is America, America, right? Oh my gosh, you would yeah, not get smarter you, listening I'm, to this. I'm gonna I'm, promise you that. Yeah, I, I was pleasantly surprised we found it. Um, so, you know, we roll into town on Saturday and uh, uh, Sunday we we head up to to go get some provisions and and uh, going up the road and there there it is. I was like, oh, we got to try that out because uh, you know you hear all about it, etc. And she and of course my wife she she thought it was the same thing as uh, the one that we have in North Carolina there in the Mooresville Concord Canapolis mm -hmm. area. I said no. I said this is different. This is different. It's a completely different chain. Yeah, so I said we got to we got to eat there. So last night we finally did it. We we rolled up in uh, Big Dookie and walked on in. And uh, that's man, his truck's name. I tell you clear. what, <laughs> truck truck. Yeah, for those that are just joining, yeah, that's, that's our truck. Nick, well, before you eat, I call after. her. I call okay. the truck that. Lori, yeah. Lori hates it, but I, oh my god. So <laughs> so we go in and and um, it, it was good. It really was. Um, the the weight was I, I, well. It's, I don't know if they were understaffed or if it was just because it was so busy because it's popular, but um, you know, we had a little bit of a wait there. I mean, we probably waited a good uh, 15, 20 minutes to get our food after we ordered. Um, but yeah, it, it uh, I got my food and, and Lori got hers and, and it was, it was a good burger. It certainly was. The fries were crispy and, and mm -hmm. not, you know, not overly done. They were just right. Um, the, the meat was juicy. Um, cheese was just right. The buns were just right. It was it was a good burger. I enjoyed it. I, I, Did you get I definitely would go eggs back and <laughs> no, nope, I didn't. I I uh, I did it just uh, my normal way: meat, cheese, and bun only. Gotcha. No, okay, no so let me ask: this. when when your wife opened up her sandwich, did you ask her if you got the buns hung? <laughs> oh, I no. thought that would be better. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> But I'll tell you, so that Whataburger, man, they became super famous for their taquitos. Do they still make those? Oh. I didn't see any on the menu, so I don't know. Oh, my gosh. I don't know, maybe this one doesn't have it, or if I just missed it, or oh. they just don't do it anymore. So those, those we get in, eventually man. when we get into Texas, we'll have to look, because, you know, that's primarily where Whataburger is, is the yeah. Texas institution. That's one of those chains I've never had that people – it's like the in and out of the Southwest or something, I guess. They just love it, right? right? Or – yeah, there's a cult, burger cult or something. Fun story. Yeah, I, I think 21. I was born in Phoenix, Arizona. My sister was going to ASU, which, by the way, that's probably the most alcohol consumed on campus anywhere in the country. 
So she's like, hey, you're more than Florida State. <laughs> oh, yeah, Arizona State. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So the first thing she does after I get off the airplane is, hey, we're going to, to we're going to Whataburger. And I'm like, do what? And I ate taquitos like they were going out of style. And then we were doing shots of this cactus juice. So when you're getting further towards Arizona, you need to find cactus juice because that's the only place you can get it. Just be mm -hmm. careful because it sneaks up on you. <laughs> Are you sure that wasn't tequila? <laughs> well, no, it's like a schnapps. It's sweetened, um, but uh, it, it packs okay. a bunch. So, yeah, it's totally worth it. And if you bring a bottle back, I'm happy to drink it with you. Let's just put that up. <laughs> All right. I have to take. I have to keep an eye out for it. Uh, speaking of burgers, um, there's a little event happening here in the Concord area called Burger Madness. Are you guys familiar with this? No, yes. tell me about it. Was it last year they did this? I believe they did it last year. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm saying they were inspired by our burger tournament we did a few years ago, where we picked, <laughs> where draft where we, where we drafted burger toppings. This is pre-COVID. Because we never got to eat any of the burgers because everything's shut down. But I'm giving us the credit for the idea. And now we have all these burger joints uh, competing, basically. I had the website up, I thought, yesterday. Now I can't find it. Um, hold on one second. Let me actually pull that up. This is what happens when Biggin goes out of the country. The wheels come off the Brian bus. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> He does all the work. Let's be clear. Apparently. Well, he, he does all the work. work. I just so, push the buttons. Yeah. Say something stupid every now and then. All right, here we go. Burger Madness. I was at visitcabarrus.com. I'll have links in the show notes for you local folks who want to check this out. So I'm going to go through the lineup of some of these burgers, and you guys can kind of tell me if you think this sounds good or I'm just going to pass. Was it what's the pat, uh, swipe right or left or something on these burgers? I don't know. What's the, what's the right? <laughs> What's the right um, words here? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> According to George Strait, it's check yes or no. Okay, yes or no. Mm. There we go. By the way, I'm ready for right. music trivia. When are we doing that? Music trivia? <laughs> What's after this? Check All right. yes or no. <laughs> we could do a music show. That'd be fun. Um, that would be fun. A very different taste in music, probably, between the four of us. Uh -oh. <laughs> so the first one up is called Smoke and Spice from Two Gals <laughs> Kitchen. Juicy lean beef patty with house smoked brisket, caramelized onions, cowboy candy from Greenleaf Farms, whatever that is, melted cheddar cheese, and house made barbecue sauce on a toasted brioche bun. Yes, that sounds very good. Yes, yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm like good. fifty fifty on barbecue sauce on burgers. Typically, it's too sweet, but that sounds pretty good. It hides the sins of the other ingredients. Well, true, yeah. <laughs> How's the, and a lean beef patty kind of scares me sometimes. Don't make it dry. But there's brisket on there that might also cover up some sins. Uh, good sandwiches. One, the the Steph Curry burger uh -oh. from 73 in Maine. He doesn't even live out here, does he? Uh, triple patty. Oh, of course it's a triple. That makes sense. <laughs> Three three ounce patties consisting of fresh round sirloin, ribeye, and tenderloin. So these are ground in house. Triple cheese, American pepper jack, and smoked gouda. Mm. Triple bacon. There's only one kind of bacon, I guess. Triple sauces, sriracha mayo, barbecue, and firecracker sauce. And triple condiments. <laughs> I thought those were condiments. Served with triple spiced fries. So does Steph Curry play baseball? Because I keep hearing the three, and I'm thinking basketball you know, score like three points at a time or something. Uh, yeah, basketball, Golden basketball. State. He's, he's a, from Davidson. He's from yeah. he's kind of like a prince of Carolina basketball. Because Del Curry, I just I know him from the time. Subway commercials, yeah. and and I still won't go there. Yeah, he he. Oh, Subway he, sucks. He put Davidson on the map of basketball a couple years ago. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah. I hope Subway never wants to sponsor us because. So no. Oh no! Nope. I'm out. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I don't think. I don't. I think you'll get agreement from all of us. Subway's a step sure. above yeah. Burger King for me. So you know, you know how I feel about you that. You know how I feel Burger King. <laughs> hey, this is the Burger Show. Let's talk about Burger King. They're actually revamping their menu to focus on burgers again. Can you believe it? What? Shocking. Imagine that. It's in the name. Yeah, burgers. Now, like, yeah. if they could get the service up and if they can get their restaurants clean then maybe they might have a chance yeah i just can't do that 
It's so bad. So, uh, side note, yeah. do you ever see, like, you go through the drive through and you see, like, a Beyond, it says, just says Beyond Burger or Beyond mm-hmm. whatever. I instantly think, oh, that sounds really good because of the name. <laughs> Forgetting what it is. We go, oh, wow, what is that? You know, that's going to have something amazing on it. Then, it. then my brain goes, no, no, no. No, no, no. That's not good eats. Don't touch yeah. that. <laughs> that's like corn husks and soybean rejects and, yeah, with a it's lot of It's not even color. veggies. It's just like compost or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to put it. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> compost that's been sitting outside for a few months yeah. in the oh summer. Yeah. Oh with steam re- rising off good. of it. All right. We're two burgers in. I just need to move this along. Uh, the ooey gooey cheeseburger. Who doesn't want that? Yes. Right? Immediately. Yes. That sounds. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, basically <laughs> it sounds like a patty melt, grilled onions, jalapenos, and pickles. Pick one. Yeah. But and cheese whiz. Oh. 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 Weird. That went like a different direction. I'd eat that. It looks like a cheesesteak in the picture. So. Uh, Crafty Carolina Classic from Cabarrus Brewing. Two quarter pound Angus beef patties, American cheese house made Concord lager chili, creamy mm. slaw, yellow mustard, and beer battered onion rings on a Duke's bread bun. Yes, to onion rings. Yeah, anything with beer battered onion rings. Yeah. Mm, love it. Uh, pimento cheese break it, pimento cheese bacon burger from Chop House 101, eight ounce patty, Chop House seasoning, homemade pimento cheese. I'm in for that. Onions, mayonnaise, mustard, lettuce. Oh, sauteed onions, excuse me. That makes a difference. Mayonnaise, mustard, lettuce, tomato, brioche bun. Yeah, sounds fine. I don't think I was going to win anything. Uh, La Frita Cubana. Seasoned ground beef and chorizo patty. Ooh. Grilled with onions, top of tomatoes, lettuce, Chorizo. shoestring potatoes, smoked bacon, and a fried egg. I mean, fried eggs hide yeah. sins too, though, just like barbecue sauce. You get that yolk running, yeah. you don't so care. Good. You're just like, so, ah, good. So, good. so good. Melty and rich. And, <laughs> yeah. Mm, and like scrambled eggs. All right. Uh, the Happy <laughs> Tummy Hot Box Next Level Kitchen. Aaron may be familiar with that one. A third pound burger, tomato bacon jam. Yum. Cheddar mm-hmm. and provolone, crispy onions, smoked jalapenos, and garlic aioli. Hmm. The bun looks kind of funny. Is that the one? It's like, it looks like it has like oatmeal in the bun. There's pictures? If you go to, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the pictures of the. Of course, there's pictures. This is an audio I'm podcast. Hungry, and you're talking about pictures of burgers now. I'm going to yeah, log here, off. Let me help you. I'm going to just send this. <laughs> leave this right Everyone here. Everyone jungle me. the burgers. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Let's see oh. what we got here. The Thunderlicious Pizza Burger. Oh boy. From Iron Thunder Saloon and Grill, stacked with one of Iron Thunder's famous kickstands. I don't know what that is. House made cheese sticks mm. and a char grilled eight ounce hand pattied Angus beef burger patty, marinara provolone cheese. Then the top bun is flipped to create a pepperoni pizza on top of the burger. Interesting. How it kind of reminds me of that. Uh, I can't remember which restaurant it was that had the hamburger, but instead of buns, you had grilled cheese sandwiches. So it's two grilled cheese sandwiches with with a hamburger in between the sandwiches. Yes. That's a heart attack waiting to happen Uh, right there. (laughs) I was literally going to say, heart attack on a plate. (laughs) That's right. This one sounds kind of weird, but I like cheeseburger pizza, so why wouldn't I like pizza cheeseburger? Does that make sense? (laughs) I think you should try it, Brian. Iron Thunder Saloon and Grill. Looks I'm like still fascinated with the cheese whiz thing because yeah. we were talking Pennsylvania talk, right? G Jet. But mm-hmm. have you gone to Philadelphia and you order it with whiz or without? Mm. Like whiz on cheesesteak is money. Forget American cheese, forget any of that stuff. It's wit whiz. Oh I, my gosh. I haven't had it there that way. There's a place that did it around here. I don't know how authentic it was. They did have a cheese whiz option for the cheesesteak though. Now, now you're saying that in past tense, so are they no longer there? <clears throat> uh, it was Duckworth. Oh, yeah, Duckworth. Yeah, is that there. before they were yeah. – oh, this was when it was a cheese steakery about 15 yeah. years ago. It, was, it wasn't it yeah. was a restaurant. It was Duckworth's yeah. cheese steakery. Nice. And that's all they did was, like, sandwiches, mm. hot sandwiches. Then yeah. they got their liquor license and things. 
I never went back. Well, they got into doing pizza and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you could go there on a Monday night, get like three dollar beers and an eight dollar pizza, and just you know, pick yeah. out, work out, and freak out. But those were pretty. You could get the Man. one with the cheese whiz on it, and it was pretty good. That's cool. Oh, uh, let's see. I wanted to just pick a couple. Oh. <clears throat> Roasted jalapeno bacon beer cheeseburger. Yep, that sounds you good. Uh, put a ring on it burger from Johnny Rogers. <laughs> Has a lot of onions. Hmm. That's the. Cajun rim a lot. Ooh, okay. I'm just kind of mm. moving this along now. Um, okay, this one makes me mad. Maybe oh, no, this is beef chicky baby burger. I'm confused. Beef burger Chicken. infused with Lizon smoked barbecue, hickory smoked bacon, the dash of salt and pepper. It's on. It's in the ingredients list. Topped with caramelized onions and tomatoes, fresh lettuce, mayo, and crispy beer battered onion ring. I don't know if the chicken has um, the name doesn't make sense to me, but mm. um, Loco Burger from Punchy's Diner. The pictures are killing me on these. I'm glad I ate before we recorded. Hand I patty. Do, you're killing me, dude. You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's going out to get like steak and shake after this or something. I don't know. Hand patty. Right now. Wait a minute. Beef and special seasonings. I'm going to Whataburger. Top of Queso Blanco, not Burger King, uh, Pico de Gallo. Avocado, bacon, and tortilla strips on a pretzel bun. Okay. Mm. 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 Yeah. Does anybody have a Juicy Lucy on there? Because that's usually a home run. This one kind of looks like one. I'll get that in a second. Oh, my goodness. Tennessee hot bacon burger, house ground beef, candied bacon, pimento cheese, pickles, and a cornmeal fried green tomato. Yeah. That sounds interesting. Coffee peppered burger with cheer wine barbecue sauce. And this is at the Hilton Garden Inn. Oh <laughs> it's my the gosh. restaurant in the Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just move on. Cheer wine sauce. That sounds interesting, but I don't know. Uh, Smoke Pit has a juicy smoked burger. They smoke it for 30 minutes. It's blended with a little brisket fat and top of maple bacon jam. Oh. I bet Sharp that's American amazing. onion straws. Yeah, it sounds and good. Lettuce and yes. tomato. I mean, that's the one. I just, I'm, wondering, I'm drooling now. After, I feel like three of the four of us are going to be at Smoke Pit tomorrow eating that burger, and somebody might not. Mm, let's Thanks. see. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> we'll send you on the mail. <laughs> send you Thanks, pictures Terry. of it. We'll send you lots of pictures. <clears throat> yeah. There you go. The Speedway has one called the Notorious BLT. There's a bunch of burgers on here. Brioche bun, sirloin patty, tomato basil cheddar, pickled jalapeno BLT slaw, which is shredded mm. lettuce, pork belly, and pickled jalapenos tossed in remoulade sauce. Finish the fried green tomato bacon jam on the bottom bun. Oh, man. I think I still want the smoke pit one. Um mm. And then the list of the last one, Vortex hand spun burger, marinated beef and chorizo patty, fresh tomato slice, house made mozzarella, roasted tomato basil, aioli, apricot balsamic drizzle on a fig brioche bun. Ooh. That's fancy. That sounds fun. That's fancy. So, I didn't know they were doing that kind of food over there. I knew they were doing a lot of paninis and stuff. That sounds kind of next level right there. Yeah. This, uh, by the way, started March 1st. So. Uh, that was this week. What the heck, man? So, yeah, let's see. Uh, the competition goes the whole month. Announced on April 1st is the winner. So we'll That's definitely have to so revisit this. Right? I know we went through those quickly, but did any of those jump <laughs> out as like, I got to try that? Definitely the smack fit one. Yeah, I agree. Matt. In the cheese whiz. Yeah, the ooey gooey yeah. cheesesteak burger. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Oh, Bebo. Oh, that's the place I've heard about that. I haven't been, but I've heard. <clears throat> oh, friends. that's the one that's owned by Smoke Pit, right? Is it? Yeah. It's the same that owners. Would make sense. They have the meat. Okay. The actual meat. Yeah. Right yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. That was our burger thing. I think, speaking of madness, we do have a fish sandwich bracket we're going to do here in a week or two. So you guys can look forward to that. Aaron, how do you feel about fish sandwiches? Um, I'll try it. I, was I like fish. I mean, I like seafood. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to go get a filet of fish or anything. No, but. Well, that's probably going to be on there. Filet of fish. Oh, okay. Or I mean, I'll try it. But. Jim, have you seen the McDonald's secret menu hacks they, they came out with? We talked about a few weeks ago, but nah. you, you can buy a, something called a land, sea, and air. You know, I did hear about that. I, you're right. I did. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. They basically give you three sandwiches and you're supposed to stick them together and then, and yeah. then consume them. Yeah. At one time. So yeah. I was I was kind of like startled by this Arby's commercial last night because you know we have the meats. Well, mm -hmm. apparently they have like this flounder sandwich that just looks insane in the picture. And I drove by an Arby's today and I was tempted. I was tempted, but I wouldn't do it. I was, uh, I'm they sorry. Do good, I they do a pretty good fish sandwich in, in the fast food world. That's, okay. that's the you know Bojangles and historically that's a pretty good fish sandwich. Okay. Um, I'm going to take your word for it, but we are, are getting two... a boat like a mile up the street from us. So if they can find staff, it's going to open soon yeah. and I'll go try some. Yeah. Those are the, those are the two I would say in the past for me have been the, I'll go buy those and eat them and okay. enjoy them for fast food. You know, you're on the road, whatever. Convenient. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, we're going to move into some wacky news here. Uh, Brought to you by Level Up Logo. If you need some custom apparel done, go check out uh, leveluplogo.com. So where do we go here? Um, so are you guys familiar with Wordle? Yes. I believe everyone. Yeah, I've heard of it. I've not played, but it's I haven't either. It's like if you post your Wordle score on Facebook, I snooze you for 30 days. <laughs> As you should. <laughs> Honestly. I'm, I'm done. As you should. I'm done. I, I don't buy into anything that everyone's hyping up. Yeah. I haven't I'm touched like, it. We'll see. I, I'm not interested because yeah, of the, it's the hype. I'm, I'm an anti hype yeah. in general. <laughs> Unless it's chicken sandwich. I've always been I kind of on that bull train, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've always been kind of a rebel. I, I, I don't like, I don't know. I just don't like being a sheep. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead right. Brian. Well, and somebody just bought them out because they're so popular. The New York yeah, Times. the New York Times. Yeah. Right? Is that who it was? Yeah. Oh, and then they so made it all complicated or something. They, made it they weren't tracking yeah. you before. They're tracking you now. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why. Ah! Um, I got things going off on my phone. No worries. Brian's sending me messages about burgers. Oh, my like God. 10 minutes ago. <laughs> um, Sorry. Who else is sending me messages? Oh, goodness. All right. My daughter is sending me her Mario Kart score. Okay. So, um, <laughs> is speaking that like of Wordle, what'd you say? Is that like a credit score? It's just lower than that, probably. Um, an 80 year old woman was taken hostage in her home uh, recently, and her family was alerted that something was wrong after she didn't read text messages or share her score on the popular game Wordle. This is how they knew something was wrong. Uh, Denise Holt woke up in her home in Lincolnwood, Illinois, in the early hours of Sunday morning and saw a naked man holding scissors. The man threatened to cut her if she screamed and got into bed with her. He later locked her in the bathroom in her basement. Uh, she told uh, the, the news that she was cold, hungry, and in pain while trapped because the man would not bring her food and medicine. The police department confirmed that uh, the suspect took his clothes off. Um, he was having a mental health crisis. Mm. before breaking into the woman's home. Uh, he collected the phones in the home and secured the door. Uh, while she was trapped and worried for her safety, her oldest daughter in California was growing concerned that her mom had not texted her Wordle score, a daily word game. You guys know what that is. Um, her other daughter, who also lives in the West Coast, not noticed her mother had not responded to text messages. So the red flag here, <laughs> she's been sending, oh, here's my Wordle, here's my Wordle. So um, maybe, Jim, you shouldn't be snoozing those messages. It could be a cry for help. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I love people, but come on. Like, come on. Yeah. Sorry. Saved your life. I, I saved your life. That's right. Oh, my gosh. Crazy. Right. Uh, so uh, here's another. This is a more food-related news. Uh, a determined 22-year-old has reclaimed the Guinness World Record title of tallest stack of M and M's. I saw that. Do you guys want to guess? If you already know, don't answer. You want I'm to guess how many M and M's is the world record for stacking? What do you think, Aaron? Five. Imagine twenty-five. Aaron says twenty. The new world record 
tallest stack of M&M's is six chocolate candies. And they have to stand for, what is it, 10 seconds? Um, that's, that doesn't even say what the... I think it's 10 seconds, so they have to stack them yeah. up directly, and then they have to hold for 10 seconds to do it. That's but this nuts. guy's like a serial, like, world record holder kind of guy. Like, this is his job. He tries to break all of them, and I think... I want to say he got like a couple dozen last year. Like he just goes for it, That's which is crazy. Is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's an English guy. He just six. I mean, think about the shape of an m M&M, though. It's all round. There's no flat edge anywhere. So that's, you know, I maybe mean, if you use chopsticks, you could do it very mm-hmm. delicately if you're really good, like Mr. Miyagi style. But listen, I'm a little round, but I do have a flat edge. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what's the number? Yeah. Yeah. It's a serial record breaker. Yeah. It's crazy. Like this, this guy lives for that stuff. That's he should be on TikTok. Right. <laughs> oh, only play. Oh, well you can't use the flight. It has to be a plain M&M. Yeah. It can't be any of their, I feel like that'd be the easiest one though. Could you imagine stacking the peanut oh, or it. the, <laughs> like the pretzel ones yeah. are almost completely like ball shaped. There's no way. Uh, what else has he done? He still holds the titles for most drumstick flips in one minute. Fastest time to build a 10 toilet roll pyramid. Longest duration spinning a basketball on the nose and 10 others. Now imagine if he actually applied this in real life. Yeah, I was going to say like, it does seem like kind of easy. Like, I mean, well, like people are dying of cancer or starving around the world. And this guy's yeah. stuck in toilet paper really fast, right? I mean, <laughs> Hey, that was good during the pandemic because you couldn't get it. All you had were the well, rollers. Yeah, no, right. right. Which we have finally gotten rid of all the prison toilet paper in our house. Let me just tell you, anytime one of those one ply show up, we try to send it to our daughter. But I'm just sorry. No, sorry. I just <laughs> prison toilet paper. Oh my gosh. Oh. So yeah, I remember finding I like a pack of napkins or something in like April of two years ago. Like a big thing of napkins was like Oh, it's amazing. I found paper products <laughs> at the supermarket. <laughs> it's like winning the lottery. Uh, okay. Uh, last article here. Again, we're on the food train tonight. So this is a BuzzFeed article. And I'm really curious how you guys feel about some of this stuff. But this is basically reviews from non-Americans eating like classic American food. Things that we kind of take for granted as being delicious, maybe, or maybe not. Um, so I'll try to fly through these so we don't spend too much time. Uh, the first thing on this list is American cheese. Because if it's, I think it has one purpose, maybe. And that's on a kid's cheese sandwich or on an egg. I like it on an egg sandwich, actually. Hamburgers, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hamburgers, hamburgers be good, yeah. Anything that's, anytime you're going to melt it. Like, when I was a kid, you know, I would just go to the fridge and unwrap it and just eat a slice, right? You I do still know do what that. it says on the, on the package, right? You know what it's actually called? Oh, no. What is it? Processed cheese food. Processed cheese food. Yeah. Who's uh, buying that? That's like well, a couple of years ago, Breyers didn't say ice cream. It said frozen dairy dessert. Ooh. I think now they fixed it. But if there was for a, a t- period of time where it didn't say ice cream, I was like, well, I'm not eating that. It's not real ice cream. Uh, <laughs> number two, Hershey's chocolate. Which apparently is really sweet. I guess if you're not, don't have the palate of a American. Uh, pineapple on pizza. This is controversial. I know. Mm. I'm stand on pineapple, guys. No. Yes. Pineapple doesn't belong on pizza. No. No. no? And and I so pineapple, ham, and bacon. You got to get all three on there. The bacon adds the salt to help offset the sugar in the pineapple. Here's the challenge for you. I think I may have mentioned this before. Pepperoni pineapple pizza. That's the no. winner. No. Yes. No. Yes, We're not friends on. anymore. Hang on. How do I turn this off? Okay. I'll see you later. <laughs> I'm going to order pineapple. Okay. pepperoni. I'll try, I'll try it for you. I make my own pizza, so I won't order it and embarrass myself. I'll just make it at home. It's good. Surprisingly good. Because it does has that salty... It. it yeah. All yeah. right. It's better than ham because ham doesn't taste like anything, right? On a pizza, it gets drowned out by the rest of the things happening. That's where the bacon comes in. You got to double pork it or single pork <laughs> it, budget pepperoni it, and it's done. So, 
Um, American I feel like there's a that's what she said in there or something. <laughs> 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 oh. No. oh okay there it is I saved it. there it is uh aaron is this, one of us <laughs> for those of you uh, uh listening and not watching that was a spit take on jim's side over there so, <laughs> um, so yes yeah, american soda super sweet I, I can get on board with that um also, the fake nacho cheese, like the yellow can you get at like the movie theater mm. or like high school football games. Apparently, that's gross to some people in like France or something. Um, this Australian guy thinks we eat too much. The portion sizes are too big. That's true. <laughs> uh, <Sure>. Maybe. <laughs> did you see the plate of gnocchi that Biggin had? I I'm telling not. you, that was a portion. Was it? Those was Italians it, know how to put the food out. Was that for the table or was that for? Uh... <laughs> Good point. Good point. His table. Never like 10 people. <laughs> yeah. uh, American taco night. Um, I believe mm-hmm. there's a, like a, a meme on TikTok about white people tacos. Yeah. Uh, white people taco night. It's yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. Hard shell, yeah. cheese sauce, ground beef, taco yeah. seasoning. <laughs> Sour cream, the little packet in the box of salsa, you know, oh, yeah. maybe some tomatoes. We all, we've all done it. We've all had it. Oh, yeah. They're not bad. They're just what, probably what? not. Actually, you probably should not nah. those. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like what you get at Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah. I, I like, honestly, I like the homemade, homemade, like the Ortega box better than Taco Bell, to be clear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's not even close to homemade. Not even sure. <laughs> well, I'll make my taco seasoning now, but I still get the shells from them because I don't got time for that. Oh, yeah. You the do. seasoning is like really easy to make. I will teach you how to make your own tortillas. You just have to come over and do it. And yeah, you know what pressing tortillas? Like, yeah. yeah. Press the whole thing. Yeah. Press them deep prime. I had, I had some get... friends growing up who would make, they were from California, and I'd hear they were having Mexican night, and I would make an excuse to hang around, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't leave. They'll feed me. And they would do their own, like, taquitos and, like, nice. fried tacos. And, oh, man. man. It's so good. So the neighbor's niece is moving into her first apartment, and my wife's trying to clear out some appliances. So we have a Giada De Laurentiis Panini Press. Yes, please. Send that thing away. But then she goes, how about I give her the fryer? And I'm like, uh, no. no. The fryer's not leaving the house. No. So I'm with you on the taquitos and everything else. Yeah. yeah. We're just going to – we're going to have – taco night at my house and we're going to videotape it and it's going to be ugly let's do it <laughs> let's do it uh root beer hey w- hey wait uh, until after uh beginning of may when i'm back in town oh yes <laughs> yeah. yes wait so cinco de mayo or mayo or may yeah may. sounds good that's the thing it's, like, it's lining the things up for us here that's nice uh root beer twinkies what's wrong with twinkies Right, I, people don't know. Don't don't know. It's an American institution. Sweet cinnamon buns, as opposed to right. Cinnamon buns are delicious. Salty, so. sweet. I mean, cinnamon. Yeah. Come on, in every airport in America. That's right. That's right. Uh, deep dish pizza. They're saying it's not pizza. I, it's not meat. Like- I would call it. P- it's, it's a casserole. It's a pizza casserole, right? I like it, but those are fighting words in part of this country, man. You right? got to be careful. Uh, yeah, start World War oh, Four or something, right? <laughs> yeah, I see. Um, American fast food. I can't argue with that one. Um, is American bread sweet? Would you, it is like white bread. It's, yeah, I think that's what it is, yeah. white bread or. I feel um, like it has a little bit of a sweetness to it. If you're from the South, it may have been called light bread at some point. Yeah. Yeah. See, just, if you that. take it's homemade bread, bread if, brioche, there's a yeah. ton of sugar in those, and those aren't uh-huh. Native yeah. American. But I guess I think they're looking at like the Merida white bread, right? Is that sweet? It, it is, like, if, especially if you go in and compare it. So, so, so you make homemade bread, mm-hmm. and usually you're going to use what yeast, flour, salt, and water. Um. Do, and then if you go and you you eat eat a slice of that and then eat a slice of, of you know like bunny bread or whatever mm-hmm. 
you'll you'll be able to detect that there's a lot of sugar in that store bought bread in the the hmm. Rita or whatever. But and, now, and I actually noticed that eat sugar. That's how you get all the little air pockets. Yeah, shoot, like, feed, feed sugar and make beer. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. That one's tough. I, I, I'm not. I'm not good with that one. Yeah, um, I know. But I've made bread before with just those those few ingredients, and I had the you know air pockets in the bread. You put no sugar in there whatsoever. No sugar whatsoever. It's uh, just yeah. salt, flour, yeast, rise. and uh, water. I have yeah. some pizza dough recipes that don't call for sugar. Yeah, but it's just super. It's good. Place. I love that bread. Yeah. Well, then I think we just need to adopt another musical trend and just go no sugar tonight. <laughs> I listen to music or pour some long. sugar on me. Sorry. These things just fall out of me. Yeah. Uh, number fourteen on this is instant ramen. Oh. Nothing. I mean, yeah, yeah. Not, not that's not thing. American. That that's came not, from like Korea. Did it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Also, like if you, the instant ramen you get from like an Asian food store versus the ramen you get at like so different. Ryan, they th- so there's different. some extra packets in there to make a really big mm-hmm. difference. Mm. <laughs> And it's not twenty two cents. Uh, no, it's at least two bucks. I think a lot of times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cherry flavored anything. Uh, the picture here on the can is che- is a coke of the uh, can of cherry coke. Words hard. What's wrong with cherry? I mean, cherry flavor. I guess they don't really. The the comment here is saying that cherry flavored things don't actually taste like cherries. Hmm. Some validity there, I suppose. It tastes like maraschino cherries, maybe, mm-hmm. which are cherry flavored cherries, right? Is that the? <laughs> <laughs> They're grapes in disguise. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. I would. I would go as far as say as banana flavored things don't taste like banana nah. at the time, or like yeah. watermelon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost got a watermelon Mountain Dew today just because. Just but try. I bailed out. I can't do it. All right, uh, this next one is has some fighting words for us that grew up in the South here. Casseroles made with cream of anything soup. I mean, Do you know you can make your own cream of? It's yeah, like really easy. It's really good. But it's yeah. really easy, yeah. This is back from the Norman Rockwell days, though, right? Campbell's soup cans. You made everything casseroles. I think we've mm-hmm. lost our, our way with casseroles, but... They had the green bean casserole that didn't have the French's onions on top. So they, they just went right after the soup. If they had the French's onions, they would have liked it. Yeah. That's the that's <laughs> critical. It is. You yes. need the crunch. Yeah. Very there's much. a you got texture. So uh there's a an obscure TV celebrity food guy named Alton Brown who uh has a green bean casserole and his recipe i use his recipe a lot for like thanksgiving but he doesn't he tries to make his own onions i, I don't i skip that part and get the can mm-hmm. or the box or tub whatever you call it so everything else is you know you're using mushrooms and heavy cream and making that soup and putting your green beans in it and then you get the can and sprinkle on top and it's the best green bean casserole in the world <laughs> so for anybody listening or watching, I just want to let you know that Brian's source for all things food is Alton Brown. Just put that out. <laughs> like, if you want to know how Brian cooked it, don't even ask him. Just go to Alton yeah. Brown's website. That's that's it's all him. right there. Um, the, the pioneer lady. I've gotten some some uh, tidbits yeah. from her. Yeah. Um. And then there's a, a blog, and we'll probably get into this later online called. Um, Oh, what's it? Oh, shoot. Uh, amazing I think it's the bearded home cook.com. I think that's the one. Oh, it's the, it's the other ones. Uh, amazing rib.com. <laughs> guy called Meathead. Uh, oh, yeah. I've uh, yeah. subscribed to a lot of his stuff. So, anyway, that's, what, that's who taught me to cook, though. Like, I spent a decade in front of food TV watching a lot of that stuff. Um, Him okay, and moving on. That on the map, man, it was huge. huge. Yeah, yeah. And now they didn't even get Bobby Flay to renew because yeah. he wanted more money. So, like, what's the channel going to do now? I mean, he's he's the guy. Yeah. Or unless it's Guy, because maybe Guy Fieri. Which, guy by the way, the guy. The, the Cancun Airport, two margaritas, two burgers, hundred and fifteen dollars. Good night. Not a fan of Guy. Wow. 
Yeah. Those nachos look good. The trash can nachos look pretty good, but you make them at home. You just need a big pot, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like the, you know, the drivers, the dining food, the, what do you call it? The, the show he did where he rode around. Diners, the drive-ins. I love that. Just you know, <laughs> yeah. it helped a lot of businesses out a little bit, I think, with the oh, yeah. income. But All right, moving on. Uh, Mountain Dew. Apparently, there's a problem with Mountain Dew from non-Americans. What's wrong with you people? Ranch dressing. What? Okay, okay, like homemade ranch dressing is superior. Like the stuff you get at like a restaurant that's like really oh, good. Yeah. And, like, I want got that. a lot of dill in like, it and uh, like. The, but the like sizzling ranch dressing, whatever they're wherever they're getting that from, you know. Yeah, but not the little, the little wet. whatever. I, can't <laughs> I don't know what it is. Not good. Mm. Yeah, pumpkin spice. Anything? Let's see. And then let's see New York City street hot dogs. What? You need that in a Mountain Dew, right? Uh, sweet potatoes and marshmallows on top. I actually, don't like that one. Me either. Uh, Cincinnati chili. You want sweet potatoes and marshmallows? I don't like sweet potatoes and marshmallows. No. Give me brown sugars and pecans on my sweet potatoes. I mean, I want all three. Mm. I would like all three. Oh, well. <laughs> you do you, right? Uh, Cincinnati chili. Wow. Oh, Disgusting. I can't do it. Uh, fluff, like marshmallow fluff. I used to love that stuff as a kid. And then yeah. Yeah. it's Did a you lot. Did you peanut butter and fluff sandwiches? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. I was that about nine years old. So I had someone move down in our neighborhood from New York and I was at their house because they had a kid my age and they made that for lunch one day. I was like, what is this? She had, <laughs> it's um, a fluffer nutter. Yeah. Uh, yep. I was like, a what? Mm-hmm. It was a lot of sugar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, if you want to go next level, grill them really quick on both sides like a grilled cheese. I'm telling you. Again, the picture on this article <laughs> is that. So, Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. Flavored hummus. Apparently hummus in America is broken as compared to America's uh, hummus other places. Because <laughs> it doesn't, it's not as fatty. It's like diet food oh, here, gosh. right? Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh, circus peanuts. Any fans? Circus peanuts? Ugh, no. Uh, Nasty. Packing peanuts. Uh, White Castle burgers. Yeah. Uh Pop tarts. Like crystal Burgers better, burgers. right? Yeah, White Castle. I don't know. They're eye. great. You can eat I, them by the handful. If I had, oh, let me think. Down. I don't know that I've actually had the real one. Oh my gosh! Because they don't so have good. them in the South, you know. You can, unless you go to the freezer section, which yeah, yeah. probably isn't. The, is it the same? Probably isn't the same. In the freezer section, I it's, imagine. <laughs> it's close-ish. They're a little greasier in person, and that's just they just slide down your throat faster. Gotcha. Slide down your gullet. Tasting. It's just about. Consumption, right? Yes. <laughs> Harold and Kumar, man, like, come on. Yeah, there's two. They made two movies. Was they made like five. five. They did five a Christmas one. one. <laughs> oh yeah. Should have stopped at the yeah. one. And then there was one in 3D, and you just don't want to watch that. Didn't one of those guys end up as a, a like an aide in the White House or something yep. with the Obama? Yep. yep. So funny. I, he left Crazy. acting to be whatever. On and the, now he's back to acting. Because. Mm, People, yeah. Anyway, that's our Rocky News brought to you by Level Up Logo. Uh, so now we're going to just have a little chat here with Jim. Um, so we talk, me and you talked briefly earlier this week about some some things we could discuss. Yeah. Um, kind of maybe educating people about getting, I mean, we all love food here, right? But I think sometimes it's, it can be intimidating, right, for someone to get into it if they haven't watched a thousand hours of food TV like I have or <laughs> been exposed yeah. to it or had culinary people around. Right. Uh, so I'm going to let you talk here for a minute uh, just about some things that we can do. Maybe just, just getting started or how to make things more approachable. Maybe. Absolutely. So <clears throat> kind of what got me doing a lot of what I'm trying to do now is teaching people how to cook at home because I mean, everybody got so busy before COVID they got so busy that it was DoorDash, It was takeout. It was, you know, go out to eat whatever, or it was the stupid mail order boxes, blue apron and some kind of home chef and whatever else. And I know people are going to think I'm an idiot, right? Like, oh, I'm still cooking, but they're portioning stuff up and they're giving you these instructions and you're just kind of following them. You're not actually really paying attention to cooking. And it's like, don't be intimidated by cooking. I think that's the one thing we talked about, Brian, like Mm -hmm. cooking is fun. 
And when you cook from a recipe and you create it and you put it on a plate and you share it with your family, it may not look perfect, but if you cook with love because you love the people you're cooking for, it just kind of comes across a little bit differently. And I just think, man, like five ingredients together, you could knock out some fun stuff. And if you're on a budget, it's cheap. Oh my gosh. You talked about ramen, like the ramen that we have in the US is terrible. Mm -hmm. I can make cold ramen with six minute eggs on top, cucumbers and all kinds of stuff. Two bucks a plate. It's phenomenal. Yeah. And uh, I mean, how long does that take? You, you said two minutes. Like you, So the, the eggs are six, six minutes. minutes it, right. takes, it takes probably 15 minutes in total to put the whole thing together. Yeah. But I think everybody just they're, like they don't want to open up a cookbook. Well, great. Go to a website. Google something that you love. You love chicken parmesan. Great. Google it. Like yeah. there's recipes all over the place. Shoot. Send me a text. I'll make I'll make it for you. I'll make a video. But <laughs> like this stuff's not hard. But you think about all the processed stuff that they're putting out there, or you look at like the ingredient list on some of these bagged foods that you're bringing home and feeding to your family. And there's like 47 ingredients in there and half of them, you can't tell what they are. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you what, you put a little olive oil, a little pasta, a couple of fresh veggies because springtime's coming around and maybe a nice lean protein in there. You've got a great bowl of food. You are probably into it for four or five bucks a plate in that situation, but there's like five ingredients and you know which every one of them are because they're from your house. They're not polysodium carbon, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I find that a lot of times, you know, we'll, we'll meal plan. Like, we'll plan out seven days of yeah. things, right? We'll grocery mm-hmm. shop for that. Well, everyone has a plan until you get punched in the face, right? Like, that's the Mike Tyson quote. Like, it doesn't work out that way because there's always something yeah. that gets in the way or you get home late and you don't have time. Maybe you plan something that takes 45 minutes or an hour. Right. What am I doing? You know, you're taking out or you're looking at what you have and saying, I can make something quick with the four or five ingredients that's Easy. edible and tastes good. That's, <laughs> you know, I mean, if you're not on like a keto diet and you've got pasta and rice in the house, you could put something together in 15 minutes, any night of the week. And like people love to do meatless Monday. There's not a whole lot to it. I mean, you could use a portobello mushroom in so many different ways and really get that umami and everything else that you want. And it doesn't take a lot of time. And now we're almost into grill season. Oh my gosh, grill a bunch of vegetables, put them out there, put them on a little bit of rice. And instead of using soy sauce with a ton of salt, you get like those cocoa aminos or something and drizzle it on there. And you've got a healthy meal that you can really enjoy. Again, I'm all about cost because, man, I'll tell you what, like you really start to learn about your budget when gas is four bucks a gallon. So um, like it's important that people save money, spend time in the kitchen. Shoot, teach your kids. Oh, my gosh. Could you imagine making those biscuits and gravy with kids in the kitchen, showing them how to make their own like brunch for Sunday morning? They wake up one morning, beat you to the kitchen and make it for you. You wake up, you're like, ooh, what's this? Yeah. You know? Like, how cool would that be? Yeah. You know, you can you say something, Aaron? I was going to say, like, what are some staples you feel like in your pantry that you're like, I always have these on hand. I like to, that like, you can just grab from and make these really easy meals when, you know, like you said, you're just kind of in a rush or, you know. So I'm totally on the spot now. Nobody told me this question, so I'm going to leave. I'll see you all later. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, um, I mean, the big stuff for us is I've always got flour. I've always got eggs. I've always have olive oil. If I want to whip out a pasta, I mean, you've got to do a little bit of prep there, but it's going to be there for you. There's always rice because we can make something. And I'll tell you what's really become a big deal for me now is cauliflower. Man, keep cauliflower in the house. You can cut it up and make it into steaks. You can like shred it and turn it into like cauliflower rice. I mean, it's super healthy for you. Obviously, again, we're talking carbs. A lot of people are really watching their carbs. You've got to replace that with something that has sustenance to it. So cauliflower's got, you know, fiber and it's got density and it gives you that full feeling. So, I mean, I go nuts on on vegetables this time of year because things are starting to, like people are starting to plant their gardens and stuff. And I'm like, ooh, let me see what I can find. And man, sweet potatoes all day long. Does anybody like barbecue chicken? Oh, yeah. Okay. So if you're in a hurry for, for barbecue chicken, you can roast a couple of chicken breasts in the oven or in a pan. You take your, your sweet potato, wrap it in a wet paper towel, three minutes on one side, three minutes on the other, cut it in half, put the chicken on top, drizzle a little bit of barbecue sauce. You've got dinner. It takes you five minutes flat and it's super healthy. It's super delicious. If you do sugar-free barbecue sauce, I mean, shoot, this thing's probably got 300 calories in the entire plate. Nice. Sweet potato. Okay. Bad. I'm with you on the barbecue sweet potato. That sounds good. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I didn't know it was meatless Monday because we do like meatball Monday here. So <laughs> meatloaf I like Monday. 
I like you. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I got to have Monday's a great time. If you're meal planning, so what, where do you hit the, where do you hit the rails? I'm going to say probably midweek. Cause like Sunday you're prepping, you're getting stuff together. Uh, Monday, yeah, you're, you're kind of in your flow. <laughs> the, the like fun Tuesday thing, you're thinking about tacos, but you've got meatloaf. And then by yeah. Wednesday it's over. Right. Usually so, what happens is like Saturday, my wife actually plans the stuff out. Like she, she makes the game plan and I have to like execute it. <laughs> it's out usually. Okay. So I, I, we, yeah, we use an app, you know, to kind of see everything. Yeah. And I look at that. Usually the, the day of and go make sure I have a thought for this. If it needs to be thawed, cause we buy groceries a week yeah. ahead. A lot of times we freeze it just to give us a little bit of wiggle room. Cause stuff goes bad faster and faster these days. It seems oh, like, um, but yeah, well, for example, like Monday this week, we, you know, I've, I have small, younger kids, so they have an, an event every night of the week almost. There's somebody has somewhere. So we all decided yeah. to go watch a soccer match with a five-year-old on Monday, which gets done at 6.15, and it's 25 minutes. So I'm ended up, so we had two cars, and she goes, you go find food, because we weren't going to come home and cook whatever. I don't even know what's on the meal plan for this week. Let me look, actually. Um, Monday night was supposed to be and we don't always play around was uh oh it was supposed to be a, a chicken thigh with mushroom and shallots like a pan like roasted thing yeah. ended up making it last night which was wednesday <laughs> so it got pushed so we have ingredients what happens is we have ingredients for all these things laying around and i'll hit uh a, the middle of the week and go i don't want to make that i don't have time to make that but i have i can make something quicker with the same types of items I have. There's a chicken thighs laying around or there's ground beef or ground something else. Or oh, there's pasta or there's a sauce or mushroom, you know, it ends up being, let me just throw something together in a pan. Chicken thighs, slow cooker. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like you just stick it in the old crock pot. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So then you don't have to cook when you get home. You just pull them out. You flavor them up however you want. You could either put them with pasta, put them with cauliflower rice, put them with, oh my gosh, chicken thighs is where it's at. But the fun part is you got to trick your kids. When you take the thigh out, pull the bone out because they'll never expect it. Cook it with the bone for the flavor, pull the bone out. So when they cut through it, they don't have to fight with the bone. Yeah, we, we do a lot of bone stuff around here, but uh, yeah. they don't, they, they don't, they love chicken. So oh, gosh, <laughs> that's yeah. not their problem. Uh, you know, going back to cauliflower rice, we'll, we get it, which is, this is probably bad. I get frozen cauliflower rice. Oh my gosh. I knew you were going to say that. I do. We and are then, so not friends. What I do with it, though, is I put it in a <laughs> skillet. And it kind of gets some the extra moisture off of it. And I make so like a, I, one of my mm. favorite things is Mexican rice. Oh, cauliflower yeah. Cauliflower rice. But you're using all the same ingredients. And it's yep. like, it, do, it tastes almost, the texture's a little off, but it's yeah. almost identical. And it yeah. passes really well. So it's easy. I, I love it. I love it. If people aren't doing it, they're missing out. Yeah. Aaron, you have any more questions about the easy stuff? Um, I saw that you tried out for MasterChef. Um, I oh. <laughs> I am like, my husband and I are obsessed with MasterChef and Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. Um, how was it meeting Gordon Ramsay? <laughs> so we met Gordon actually as part of our daughter's Make-A-Wish. So she was diagnosed um, with leukemia okay, yeah, for her 16th yeah. birthday. So we got to go out there and hang out with him for that. And then he had us yeah. come back out for a taping of MasterChef, which was super cool. Yeah. Like Gordon's the nicest guy in the world. People just, you see the TV he's personality. So nice. Oh no, my gosh. Yeah. And he's got, he's got kids around Shelby's age. So he really yeah. gravitated to her and it was, it was a great bond. He inspired her to go to Johnson and Wales in Charlotte for school, which was great. Chef Andy stayed in touch with her. Marino stayed in touch with her. But the part that I, I tell people that's just shocking is when we're on the set of MasterChef, Joe Bastianich was feeding us caviar on the side of the set. Like he's spoon feeding my daughter and I caviar. Oh my gosh. Like this, ah! this dude is legit. I love so Joe. So when I got out for season 10, we'd already been behind the scenes and everything else. I knew there was going to be a conflict, but they let me go through the entire process. Like awesome. in person stuff and everything else. As a matter of fact, the beer I'm drinking is my smoked bacon stout that I made to go with my sandwich, which was a pulled pork grilled cheese sandwich on brioche bread with a Napa cabbage, red wine, vinegar, slaw. And then I had the smoked bacon stout on the side. Amazing. So, yeah, kind of fun. Was there, American cooler, cheese on the sandwich? <laughs> was there American cheese on the sandwich? There was Gruyere, sir. We took it up just a little bit. But I'll tell you, it's funny. So he's had the same producer forever. And she's, mm -hmm. she's kind of a hard ass. Like she's a, 
she's a tough Brit. And she says, you're either really stupid or really brave to make a grilled cheese sandwich for MasterChef. All right. I'm going to go as really brave. And so yeah. little by little, they just kept moving me through the process. I thought, well, dang, maybe they don't remember I've actually seen this stuff. They might let me yeah. come. Oh, well, it's all it's all worked out. How far did you get? I mean, I was down to the final cut for L.A., but they just couldn't let me come out. Like I was in the final 200. I, I, nice. I, was, shocked. I was absolutely shocked. So nice. I'll, I'll get on one of those big shows. You know, Netflix was fun, but there'll, there'll be another one. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, uh, those of you who may not know, new listeners, uh, Jim was on the best leftovers ever on Netflix last last year. It was one, only one season of that, I believe, right? So far, yeah. So far, yeah. Uh, fun show. Go check if you haven't watched it, go check it out. Uh, Super fun. Interesting. I tell everybody, watch episode one to get the gist of it, then watch episode two to cheer me on, and after that, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? This actually brings up a good question. So, what do you keep in your fridge? Leftovers. Don't waste your stinking leftovers. Don't leave them in there for a week either. Like you've got to be careful. Four days is probably about the max, but repurpose your leftovers. Like there's good stuff in there that you could use in another way. I mean, shoot, you could put anything in a taco. My goodness, yeah. right? Pot roast yeah. in a taco. I did Leftover rotisserie chicken in a taco. <laughs> Everything goes in a taco. Mm -hmm. Just don't tell those French people because they don't like our Taco Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you don't like the French people. So that's, you know. There you go. <laughs> But we do like French fries <laughs> and French dressing and French bread. That's from a movie in the 80s. I don't know if yeah, anybody would get it. Yeah. But French dressing, that's a – It's disgusting. Classic, probably. Is it even it's, a, it's it's French? American. Like, for, like oh, ranch yes. dressing should be probably called American dressing, right? I mean – yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, so one more topic here before uh, yeah. uh, we go too far here. Um so one of the things that I love to do is smoke meat. I know, Jim, you have a smoker. You've made a, a brisket or two uh, yeah. <laughs> yourself. Megan loves to do it. So uh, what is your idea of a way, because that's another one of those things that can be intimidating. You see this great food on Instagram or on YouTube or on you watch these barbecue shows and they're spending 36 hours smoking something stupid, you know, or whatever for a really long time. they got these massive pits that are on trailers like regular guy at home i want to make my own pulled pork or i want to make some real like wh what can i do and I, you know i've got this stuff but if a listener sure. says i want to be yeah. like jim or i want to be like big and and make a bunch of ribs you know at home but i don't want to spend two thousand dollars on a on a, a smoky crock pot for that for the backyard sure. right how would you get I mean, the, the easiest way for you to smoke meat is honestly, you buy a Lucky Strike because you don't want the filter. Stick it in the pork shoulder, light the cigarette, mm -hmm. you're good to go. You got smoking meat. How many packs you need for that, you think? <laughs> At least two. <laughs> so, you know, this is funny, too, because I'm, I'm actually glad you brought this up because I did an episode on this specifically because I use a cabinet smoker and it uses chips. I'm not using the pellets. I'm really, I like to stay involved in it. So if you want to just try this out just for fun, my grandfather used to smoke our turkey every Thanksgiving on just one of those Weber kettles. So he would set indirect heat off to one side. He'd open his vents to get it to go towards the turkey. He'd have it out there for about eight or nine hours. But once your coals get white hot, you put some wet chunks on there and it creates the smoke. And then while everything is kind of smoldering over there, that smoke just circulates through that kettle. I mean, you could get a Weber kettle for, shoot, I got one for the camper, I think for like 30 bucks, 40 bucks, cheap. So that's one way. So you can use charcoal that's got real hardwood in it and then add chunks to it. Just wet the chunks first. So Brian, let me ask you this. What, yep. what kind of wood do you use? Uh, well, it depends on my, my mood, but uh, I, I, buy, I buy the chunks. You know, I buy big chunks, yeah. but I, I have a, right now I've got cherry and pecan in, in my stash. There you go. Um, before I was yeah. using, before I bought these, I think it was, what was I using? Apple and forget what else I, I usually keep two around so yeah and that so I, I like where you're going with that because you got the nut the fruit a lot of people they go just way overboard and they'll buy hickory or mesquite because they've seen it on tv yeah uh -uh. you need to have something that's super beefy fleshy like that's a very very strong flavor if you were going to smoke like steaks like some t-bones where it's not going to be over the wood for a long time you'd use one of those like the the fruited woods the pecan and stuff those all work really well and the chunk's great for that now if you want to go another route, let's just say you have a gas grill. 
Um, you can buy these little boxes. They're smoker boxes. They're like 12 bucks on Amazon. I'm not touting Amazon. Find it at a local place if you can. Give somebody local your money. But 12 bucks. Yeah. So you just take the wood chips, put it in there off to the side on a low heat burner while you have no heat over on the other side. And again, same thing. You create airflow. So you can get into smoking meat for 12 bucks plus a bag of chips, five bucks. Yeah. I mean, nothing. And then if you're you're like me, you've got a fire pit you built in your backyard that's got all that nice stone. Shoot, you could do it right over there. You just put some coal and some wood. Mm -hmm. I, I actually wrap meat up, shove it down in the coal to finish it off. So none of this costs money. Yeah, This stuff is super, super cheap compared to whatever. And then you could be that one guy that wants to cook in the cafeteria. And so he <laughs> takes a holder and sticks it inside of a crock pot with liquid smoke, puts a lid on it and goes back nine hours later. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can eat it. You can eat it that way. That's... <laughs> yeah. To me, I think any, if you have a grill that you can make a two zone fire on, yep. you're ahead of the game, right? That's, that's the trick. And I know some gas grills will do a front and back. I think it's a little more complicated. Absolutely. But if you have a left and right burner, you're golden. You need that two zone for any grill really, but the smoke, you want to have that indirect all the time. Right. And, and that, that's exactly it. It's the indirect. So, if you're afraid something's getting too warm, put some aluminum foil under it because aluminum foil is obviously going to dissipate heat really, really easily because you want the smoke to do its job, not the actual heat. The heat, 225 to 250. I mean, if you have to go buy a little thermometer to stick on there, whatever, but 225 to 250 will get you going for just about anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what would you suggest as like a first? So let's say someone does could spend some money on a couple hundred bucks on a smoker. What's the thing Honestly, you want to cut your teeth on, you think? So they make some bullet smokers. I don't know if you've seen these where they've got the rack that goes down in them. Um, they're electric. You could put the temperature you want, 250, put the smoke chips in this little thing on the outside, close that lid, just walk away. 10 hours later, you just come back and it's ready to go. Mm -hmm. If you just want quick and easy, those things work like a champ. The downside is because they're in this basket, it's hard to really check on the meat. If you wanted to spend about 400 bucks, brands like Charbroil and some of those others actually have these cabinets with a glass door and the chips go inside of them. They have a digital thermometer on them. You can actually put a thermometer inside the meat to really manage it. You can set the time, the temperature. They've got a remote control for them. <laughs> so even at 400 bucks, you're in pretty good shape. Yeah, there's a lot of options out there. Uh, I use a pit barrel, which is a drum smoker. Yeah. After you awesome. all the accessories, it's about four, you know, it's $300 in the box, but then you have to get a cover and a grill, different grill cover gate and a, yeah. There's always accessories. So when you're budgeting for your grill stuff, make sure you add some extra so you're not flipping meat with your fingers like Mojo does. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. Did you buy the uh, Bluetooth um, little thermometer, or did you do the wireless? Uh, I have. I don't have the Bluetooth one. There's a meter. You know about the meter, that thing? Yeah. I want it. I really want it. Yeah. They're expensive. They're 100 bucks a probe, right? Yeah. I just have a, I do have a wireless system, but there's still, still a lot of wires. It's a, mm. I forget what brand it is. It's one of the popular ones, but. Okay. So I'm curious. I see a smile and I see somebody that's not paying any attention oh. to smoke meat. I feel like we just figured out we have a vegetarian on the show or something. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's, I don't think that's true. <clears throat> well, I'll tell you, smoking meat is probably one of my favorite things to do. And if you can get it right, like. You can feed an army. I mean, smoked chicken wings. Oh my gosh, three hours at two twenty-five. Yeah, they're just through the roof. They're incredible. But my only caveat is, I tell everybody, don't buy the barbecue sauce for this stuff. If you're going to put twelve to fourteen hours into that piece of meat, the first and last thing people are going to taste is the sauce. It should not come out of a jar that you paid a dollar twenty-five for at the local grocery store because it was on the sale rack. You should either make your own sauce or find a high-quality sauce that's going to emphasize what you did instead of take away from it because it's full of corn syrup. Mm, good Strong point. Words. What's yeah. that, Magic Man? I'll just say good point. Yeah. So I think, I think Aaron was like Googling what kind of smoker to buy back there. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I don't smoke meats. I just asked Brian to, to send me the things that he smokes. Oh, I heard I'm you smoke to bribe him. It's not legal in this state yet. So, yeah. oh, I'm just kidding. 
All right. So yeah, you guys man. have any more questions for Jim before we uh, cut him loose here? Uh-oh. That's good seeing you again, man. Yeah. You too. This has been fun. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. We need to do this at least once a year. We're just yeah. going to send Big and off. Where should he go next, though? Let's think about it. Where should we send him next? <laughs> yeah, so we did Italy. Yeah. Um, I think I think what Big and takes Japan, maybe. That'd be a good yeah. one. <laughs> Well, that would be <laughs> yeah. You learn how to make ramen. I'm getting some Ghostbusters vibes just thinking about it. But you know, oh um, <laughs> so please put this on your agenda next week. I want to hear what he thinks of wine in Italy. Because oh. I've got to tell you, we went there, gosh, it was probably about four years ago. Yeah, it was four years ago. And like Tuscany has some of the best wine I've ever had in my life. And you can only get Chianti Classico from seven wineries in the Tuscan region because they have a certain purity law, kind of like German beer and things like that. And I guarantee you, he's not going to know the difference between that and Ripple. <laughs> I, I do know that he enjoyed the wine in Italy. Okay. So I know that much. I went to a vineyard, so. I'll let him fill in the details next week. I've already heard a little bit of it, but... I don't know if they make Muscadine wine in Italy, though, so I'm not sure what he was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Oh, Vomit. Uh, on that yeah. note, uh, well, we're going to shut things down here. Uh, so make sure you check out all our socials on the, our website, sfpradio.com. Uh, next week, again, we are going to talk with Jeffrey Holsclaw uh, uh, to get started in our series about deconstructing church. Um, so again, Jim, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, guest Thank hosting. It was, it was a great time. So, uh, what, let's see, what's his uh, Biggins call sign? Um, I, I can't remember what it is now, but uh, y'all be good now. Keep looking up. Yeah, keep looking up. Keep looking keep up. Looking up.